Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. And His mercy does what? It endures forever. For the Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever. For the Lord is good. And His mercy endures forever hallelujah 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 for the lord is good and his mercy endures forever you say well you keep saying that yeah because it's true the lord is good and his mercy endures forever there is there's no end to his goodness it just keeps on going and going and going and going and going that is becomes on that on, that's only relevant to you when you realize that there's nothing that you can do that will overturn his goodness in your life hallelujah it cannot cancel out his goodness towards you amen because it keeps on enduring and enduring and enduring and enduring and enduring there's no end to the goodness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, I guess I ought to preach sometime today. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Praise God forever. Huh. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Before we get too far into the service, I just want to take this time to, to welcome all of you to Faith and Victory Church here in Greensboro. We are so glad and excited and ecstatic that you decided to worship with us today. Amen. And if you are here for the very first time, would you please stand and allow us to give you a proper welcome to Faith and Victory Church here today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us today. We are, are so excited that you are here uh, to worship with us, and we pray and we are certain that God is going to speak a word to you today that's going to change your life and revolutionize your walk in him and with him. Amen? Amen. You know, I had a chance to, to meet Felicia and also Brother Ray at, at the back there uh, just briefly, uh, friends of my wife, glory to God, and... Um, and uh, we're just so grateful and thankful that you guys come out to be with us today. I, was, I spoke briefly with Brother Ray. He said he brought his knife and fork. I said, I said, well, praise God. I'm uh, glad you came ready to eat. Hallelujah. You know you was ready to eat when you got a knife and a fork. If you come in with a straw, you ain't ready to eat. Amen. If you're just planning on where's the desserts and the cookies and pies at, you ain't really come to eat. You just come to just do a little something. But when you show up with a fork and knife, you is coming to eat. Amen? Amen. That's called expectation. Amen? You know, I'm, I, you know when I was, uh, day, uh, uh, went to visit... The church at the time, my, my wife and I, we were in our courting stage, and uh, sh I went to her uh, church at the time, and uh, I told the pastor, I said, you know, because see, you know, in, during the courting stage, everything is contingent upon the Lord's yea or nay, you know, and so one of the contingencies that I had in place is I want to make sure that you are eating solid food where you're going. Because, see, if you're not getting a good diet of the word, you've been eating a bunch of cookies, cakes, and pies, and, and peanut butter sandwiches, you ain't going to be able to withstand this, this relationship that, that God's getting ready to join you to, because it's going to be a little taxing. You know, I'm, I could be a piece of work at times. <laughs> so you're going to need to be full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, you're going to gonna need to be full of the word of God to be able to withstand those times when I'm not as godly as I could be. Yeah, I just tell the truth. 
you know. That's not saying that I'm doing anything out of this crazy or nothing like that. But, you know, sometimes you're not walking in the God kind of love like you could be. Somebody say amen. Y'all looking at me strange. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just preached to the wall back here. Maybe the birds out, out there say amen. Glory to God. Say amen, pigeons. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, one of the things that, that you... you, you you want to have an expectation whenever you are in, uh, in church, whenever you're in a service, whenever the ministry of the word is about to go forth, you want to put your expectation out there and begin to pull on the spirit of God or the person that's ministering to you to deliver to you a word in season. You know, we are not just, you know, having a good conversation or a lecture. You know, this is not a lecture. You know, yes, you, sh you should take notes, you know, because you will be tested on this material. <laughs> Amen. This is Holy Ghost stuff. And see, the devil is going to uh, uh, initiate a test on you and you want to pass with flying colors. So, yes, in that regard, you want to uh, take good notes uh, because you will be tested on this material. So, you know, some of our teachers in the house can say amen on that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you want to be ready. You want to be vigilant. Vigilant. Vil vigilant. That's like being a villager ant. But being vigilant, you want to be focused. You want to, you know, your neighbor starting dozing off. It's kind of hunting. You don't want to miss this. You're going to be tested on this. Amen. You don't want to be sleeping in class because, you know, you know how it was when you were in school. You know, you just stayed up a little late watching Letter, Letterman or Carson or, you know, if some of you are old enough, you know, you watched, uh, who, who, uh, let's see here now, Sullivan. You know, if you watched Sullivan, you were back there. You know, I ain't watched Sullivan, but, you know, we watched Carson and some of them. You know, you know well, yeah, I remember Ed Sullivan. Well, yeah, you were back there. And that's all good. Well, we have a point of reference. You know, you know they came on late. Well, see, now back then it wasn't really late, you know, because TV went off back then, you know straight off. See, some of these young folks don't know what it is for TV to go off. You know, if you, if you had a TV in your room and it went off, you knew it was going off because you heard the military dun, 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 dun. we now in another broadcast day. You wake up like, whoa, it's late. TV is going off. You know, you either had a choice to go get up and turn the TV off or wait for it to go white snow screen. They don't know nothing about that now. You can watch TV 24-7. Now, never, ever it go off. Now, they might have a digital glitch or something like that where that channel will start working. You just flip to another channel. You keep on moving. But, you know, but anyway, I digress. A little rabbit trail. Somebody get something out of that. Amen. Glory to God. So, <clears throat> you know, you want to stay focused, want to stay uh, hooked up. Stay hooked up with us. Amen. We're going to try to keep it interesting. We're going to try to keep it short and sweet, but we're going to try to be effective. Amen. We want to make sure you get something from the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're so glad to have all of you with us today. So good to see Darren and the new grandbaby. Sister David just holding. This is my grandbaby. Yes, indeed. Glory to God. See the, see, uh, uh, Dar uh, the Tiffany and, and Josh over there. And I see them took the boys out there. They just see, enjoying their little time away and whatnot. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And new parenting. I'm so glad I don't have those days no more. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, you kind of you kind of miss it. But then again, you, you know, that's when you got grandkids You're like, yeah, hey, OK, mom and dad, there you go. We'll see y'all next time now. You know, y'all be good now. You know, we'll Skype y'all in and, you know, hey, Papa, baby. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be good now. You go to bed. You know, hallelujah. They, they, they raise and got to do the feed and the, the please go to sleep. Please go to sleep. Please go to sleep. You know, well, we got to do that though. Well, praise God. There's, you know, there's, there's beautiful things that happen as you get older. Amen. You know, you get all the upside and none of the downside of some things. Amen. You know, praise God. But hallelujah. Let's go ahead and minister the word of God. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, Father, that it's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divide in the son of the soul and spirit. It is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, I just thank you right now that I decrease, I decrease, 
that you may increase in me. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. I pray right now that every person under the sound of my voice receive a word fresh from heaven, directly from your spirit to their spirit. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now that every person gets their need met according to the word of God. Father, I pray for, for attentiveness. I pray for diligence. I pray for right now consistency. Glory to God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word is going forth in a mighty way to cause effect and, and to, to show the path of righteousness to each one of your dear children. And Father, I pray right now that I won't do anything to shame the gospel. I won't do anything to, to, to quench the spirit of God. Holy Spirit, I invite you to, to move through me and flow through me. Speak through my lips. Process thoughts through my mind. Enable me to, to speak the exact thing that you would have me to say. And then it will be at its proper place, at its proper time, decently and in order, in Jesus' name. And everybody in that agreement with that prayer said, Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, the title of the, of the message for today is Unshakable Faith. You want to have an unshakable faith. Amen. Um, but uh, the point that we're, we're speaking on is walking in God's divine purpose for your life. Amen. You want to have an unshakable faith. And the way you have an unshakable faith is walking in your divine purpose that God has ordained for you to walk in. Amen. Amen. So uh, if you'd like. You can go ahead and uh, turn in your Bible to two passages. Put your, put your, go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 58, and go ahead and put your finger there. And then uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And then we're also going to look at uh, Matthew 20. Well, we're going to look at a lot of scripture today. You know, that's what God's got for you, his word. Interest of the word gives light, and he gives understanding even to, to the simple. So you want to get the word of God in its fullest measure. Amen. amen. And we're going to also be looking at Matthew 23, 11 and 12. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. amen. All right. So I want everyone to trust the Holy Spirit to minister to your need today. Uh, I expect the Lord to meet your need and and you should, too. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us, according to the word of God. Amen. So let's go ahead and get this ready. Amen. My lovely wife bought me this tablet for Father's Day, and I'm so blessed by it. I was telling her today, honey, I thank you so much for buying me this tablet. It is it's revolutionizing my ability to minister the word. I mean, I just, you know, you, you know, I, I, I've come through, I've come through, you know, putting the sermon together with just pencil and paper, you know, with, a, with, the, with the, the Vines Dictionary and the big strong Concordance, which is like, that big it's not really that big but it seems like it's that big it's not much smaller than that maybe that big but <laughs> it's really big and so you know you're trying to find scriptures like okay i'm trying to find that scripture Whew, okay Whew, okay and you got to go through all this concordance and all this vines dictionary finding out the greek and all this that and the other da, 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 da. you know okay i come from that now we go get to the smartphone era well, you know, you can have the smartphones and, you know, you pull your Bible and stuff up and on your smartphones and all that good stuff. And all that's good and all that's great. But now we got these tablets. Praise God. Because, see, now, you know, it was it was always a task for, you know, when you're putting together something, you're sitting there trying to transfer stuff over and then print it out. And then you have your paper and stuff, you know, and all that. It's just a very arduous task, a very arduous task to put together a sermon. And, you know, I have preacher friends and stuff, you know, you know, they say, man, you need to get a tablet. You need to get a tablet. You need to, you know, and I see Pastor Ed, you know, he's, you know, got his I iPad and stuff, you know, he's flowing. I'm like, man, I need one of them. Man, Lord, I need a tablet, you know. Well, praise God. I got me one. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank God for a good wife. Being yielded to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. First Corinthians 15 and th uh, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. We're talking about walking out the plan of God for your life. Uh, nothing, nothing that happens in this life takes God by surprise. You know, you having a shortfall in your checking account, you know, then, you know, God's not in heaven, you know, the angel's not running up. Oh, Brother Mary, bro, uh, Brother John, is he's, he's short on his rent. What? What? 
Gabriel, what? Really? How did that happen? No, that's not catching God by God, off guard. You're not catching God, God off guard with your situations, circumstances, and things. Things are not catching God off. It might cost you off guard, but it didn't catch God off guard. So what are we saying here? <clears throat> God is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Amen? And so we're talking about purpose. We're talking about, uh, you know, well, well, why am I here? Uh, why am I here? This can only be found in your relationship with Jesus, why you are here. You know, there are a lot of people spinning their wheels in life, you know, going to this endeavor, you know, going after this. You know, maybe if I get this education, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find myself. You know, in those old term, you know, I'm going to find myself. Well, where you lose yourself at? You know, how did you lose, how did you lose yourself? You know, and why do you need to find yourself again? D look in the mirror. There you are. You ain't went nowhere. But, you know, we, we have all kind of sayings and stuff to, to, you know, make it seem like, you know, we're something that we're not. But you know what? Matthew 23, 11 and 12, it says, But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt, exalt himself shall be abased or made low. And he, and he that shall, shall humble himself shall be exalted. Amen? And then over in 1 Peter 5 and 6. It says, and just go ahead and, you know, if you got pencil and paper, go ahead and make you some notes. Because, you know, we may not be able to, to flip to every single passage of scripture. But if you go ahead and just jot the, jot the scripture down, you can go back and look at it. Get the, get the CD or just check it out on YouTube or whatever. You know, you'll have a scriptural reference. Amen. It says, First Peter 5 and 6 says, To humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. Some people live their whole lives and never know what they were created to do. Whole life, spinning their wheels, just going through arduous things all the time, never knowing what they are called to do. What am I here for? We're talking about God's divine purpose for your life. You were thinking, you know, and, and things happen. You know, challenges come up, situations occur, you know, things happen. You know, you were thinking that you made a, a wrong turn somewhere in life, you know, because, you know, a situation was a certain way and then it went south and then you're like, what happened here? But God is purposefully directing your journey. That's fresh from the Holy Ghost right there. God is purposefully directing your journey. There are many times when things happen in our lives and in the lives of loved ones that cause us to want to question, well, why did this happen or why didn't this happen? You thought, okay, well, you know, I just felt like it was God's will for me to get this brand new car, you know, and so I just stuck out there and put my faith out on, on it. Then I said, Lord, I just thank you for this new car. I just thank you right now that they're going to approve my loan. I just thank you right now that it's going to, you know, I, I'm going to be able to get back and forth, da, 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 you know, and you sit there and pulled your, took your faith and tried to lay hold of that thing, and they sold the car to somebody else. Then you're going back to the Lord, well, Lord, you know, I just, you said I can have whatsoever I say. You know, I can speak to the mountain and it shall be removed, be cast in the sea. If I not die in my heart, I shall have those things that I say. If I believe in my heart, well, what happened here, Lord? You know, so now, now it's God's fault you didn't get that new car. But your credit was jacked up. Maybe you should have paid your bills. So it wouldn't be a problem for you to get that car, you know. They're looking for you to have a 700 credit score, and yours is a couple hundred points lower than that. So, is that God's fault? Mm, nah, I, I, I'm going to look this way. Is that, was that God's fault? Well, praise the Lord for somebody. Hallelujah. That wasn't God's fault. So, you know, we need to, and there are things like that, like that happen in our lives. You know, we're, we're, we want to question, well, you know, well, God, where were you in that? Well, you know, here's, 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 the, here's the other side of that coin, okay? You still, you still were able to get a vehicle. You still were able to get back and forth. You still made it. You still got the promotion on the job. You still came out victorious in that situation. So what, you didn't get that car? That's not a, that's not a faith failure there. 
you didn't have a faith failure. A no does not mean that you failed. It just means it's, you may need to go in another direction. Amen? You stay in faith throughout every part of the journey. In the front end, in the middle of it, and in the back end. You stay in faith the whole time. Amen? Because God is what? God is faithful. God is faithful. There's, there's no error in, in God. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, he's leading us along this path for his name's sake, to get the glory out of your life. Amen? A detour is an unexpected, unintended life event that causes change in your originally planned direction. Many of us experience detours in our life. We, have, we were uh, coming back from Stokesdale, trying to get over to Reedsville, and, you know, there was a detour. You know, it kind of took us out the way, but we still made it. Amen? Amen? We had to go a different direction, but we still made it. Amen? Hallelujah. Took a little longer than we thought it should have took, but we still made it. Amen? Don't begrudge the detours that happen in your life. Amen? Because you're still going to make it if you stay in Christ. Amen? Amen. Say that with me. Stay on course. Stay, on course. stay, with, Jesus. stay with Jesus. You will get there. Amen. Say, I will get there. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Amen. So a detour is an unexpected, unintended life event that causes change in your originally planned direction. Some detours are self-imposed. Others have been caused, other detours have been caused by the actions of others. That's a true statement too, amen? Yeah, everybody, everybody, you know, A, are not, you know, called and acting in the spirit of God. And some people that are called and acting in the spirit of God think they're called and acting in the spirit of God, you know do things to us, for us, around us, you know, that cause detours to happen to us. Amen? But what's your responsibility? Your responsibility is to walk in love and to trust God. Amen? Amen? Amen. I've heard Keith Moore make this statement. He said, with God, expect everything. But with people, expect nothing. Well, what does that mean? Well, put your expectation on God's ability to meet your need. And to satisfy whatever desire that there is that needs to be satisfied. Don't put that pressure on another man to meet your need. Because he is not, he or she is not able to withstand that. They are not your God. Amen. They may have some ability, but they are not your God. And just like God could use them, God could use someone else. Amen. So don't put that pressure on people. With people, don't put that kind of expectation on, you know, should we expect people to do some things? Yes, you should, but not to the point where it's, it's, it's a bondage. It's wrapping them up, and they can't function because you got the this stranglehold on them with your expectation. Well, you said you are going to do this for me. You said you are going to do this for me. Well, when are you going to do it? And, you know, the money ain't in the bank yet. Well, when are you going to do it? You know, you blah, 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 blah. Huh? Cut that mess off. Cut that mess off. Go to the one who's all sufficient, all knowing. Go to the one who, who's got it and you know he wants you to have it. Amen? Amen. Leave your brother-in-law alone. Leave your cousin alone. They ain't just going to give you enough just to last till next week. And you're going to be broke again. Amen? Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path amen, amen. tell your neighbor you will be tested on this material you better take good notes hallelujah hallelujah somebody in this holy ghost church amen now you know the lord will let, allows things to happen in our lives so that it will cause us to refocus our eyes on or to him he allowed, he's not, he's not, he's not the thief who steals, kills, and destroys. That's the other fella. But he does allow some things to challenge you and to come in your way. So you can, so you can turn your eyes to him and so he can show you the path so you ultimately get the victory. Amen? So he's going to, he's going to allow some things to happen in your lives. He's going to allow some, 
some things that are unpleasant, some things that are uncomfortable, some things that were you'd rather not have to deal with to happen in your life. You're going to have marital challenges. You're going to have challenges on the job. You're going to have ch challenges driving down Wendover. <laughs> you know, let's just get real simple and plain with it. There's some challenging folks out there on that, on that road, you know. And now you're behind me today, you know. You know, and you just go ahead and, Lord, help me, help me, help me, Lord. I, I know this is, this, is, this is designed to help strengthen my love walk. I know that's what that is. I know that's what they did. I know this guy didn't show me his middle finger today. But, Lord, I'm just going to love him anyway. Hallelujah. There was a time, there was a, there was a job that I was working, man, this lady. You know, I always try to walk in love, try to be, you know, upbeat and, you know, just have the right attitude towards folks. And, of course, I, I said something that she didn't necessarily, you know, have the grace, greatest fun feeling about. And she just shot to, to, to uh, give me the, the, the most middle part of her hand uh, as a display of her, of her agreement with what I was talking about. And, and so I just, I just uh, decided to call her Middle Fingers Marilyn. You know, that's just my, my name for her when I see her. Uh, middle Fingers Marilyn, how you doing? <laughs> you doing all right today? How's that middle finger doing? <laughs> Hadn't seen it lately. That's a good thing. <laughs> you know, but you know, you gotta, you gotta, you can't let this world weigh you down with stuff. You know, because see, there's always something going to be challenging your walk with God. You know, the devil's going to make sure that you have a challenging walk, you know, because soon as you soon as you do something out of character, you know, there's a devil. I'll see. I thought you was I thought you were Satan. I thought you was a Christian. I am. But that I didn't say I was perfect. You know, I'm still working on that. And it would be nice if you wouldn't be trying to see how saved I am. You know, you could do me a favor by acting saved yourself. <laughs> Amen? amen? Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the Lord is patiently waiting for us in the background of our catastrophe to realize that we desperately need him. He loves us so deeply. It is not his desire that some of the things that happen to us do happen. But nevertheless, he is there to see us through it and to overcome like champions. Amen? Amen? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, let's look over at uh, Exodus, second chapter. We're going through the, from the 11th uh, through the 14th verse. You know, because see, you know, we were just talking about things that happen to us that, you know, are self-imposed. You know, things that we go through. And this is one of the, the scenarios that, you know, that happened to Moses. He caused this scenario. He had to go on the backside of the mountain for 40 years, you know, so he could hear the voice of the Lord and start learning what he needed to be doing so he could complete his assignment. Amen. God had a plan and a purpose for him, but he couldn't do it as a murderer. You know, he's working and operating in his own strength and ability and his own understanding and knowledge. And he done killed a man. Who how, who going to follow a murderer around, you know? Yeah, Moses, you are a leader, you murderer. No, nah, no, nah, God had to fix that. He had to come back and fix that, you know. You know, we got these dictators out here, you know. You know, they're they little murderers. You know, they will kill you if you don't follow them. But that's not, that's not the, 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 the example that God sets before us on how we are to be and how we are to act. We are to walk in love, amen? All right, so let's look here. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, and he went out unto his brethren, and he looked on their burdens, and he, spot, he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. <clears throat> you mean you hit my cousin? And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian. And he hit him. You know, he was, the first, he was, he was one of the first special ops guys. You know, or at least he thought. You know, he thought he was uh, Gerard Butler or somebody. You know. London has fallen up in here. You know, some of you get that. But anyway, and he looked this way and that way, and he saw that there was no man. He slew the Egyptian, and he, and he hid him in the sand. And when he went out of the second day, 
behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? Why you hit, why you hit your brother? And he, said, and he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Well, yeah. You know, the Bible says your sin shall find you out. Amen? You know, and see, now they got DNA. They ain't even have, they ain't even have to do DNA. They ain't had DNA. You know, but your sin will find you out. Amen? But you know what? Moses done messed up. So how do we, how do we get Moses? You know, because see, this is, this is a, you know, God still got a plan for Moses. And the same thing I would say to you, God's got a plan for you. But you may have messed up. But God's got a way to fix that. But the first thing that has to happen is you got to repent. Turn and go in the opposite direction that calls you to enter into sin. Amen? Murder is a sin, just in case anybody was kind of wondering about that. Murder is a sin. Amen? Now, the secret thing belongs unto the Lord, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. That's Deuteronomy 29, 29. And as I stated before, we must trust God. You, when you mess up, and you will mess up, yeah, I know, I know you're I know you pretty smooth and everything, but you're going to mess up. And in those times when you mess up, you're going to need the Lord to help you. Amen? It's only the prideful man, the prideful person that does not think that they don't need the Lord. Because, you know, you're not perfect. You're wrapped in sinful flesh. Does that mean that you are a sinner? No, we were sinners, but now we are born again. We've been made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, amen? Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we've been made righteous, amen? We are no longer sinners. You may sin, but your, that label of sinner no longer exists in the kingdom of God. You are now a son. You are now a daughter. You are now in righteousness with God. And when you do sin, it says in 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sin, which means you can't sin. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Amen? All right, so now let's look here at uh, Psalms 23 and 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We're talking about following God's plan for your life. God, if your trust is in him, he will lead you. If you put your trust in him, he will lead you. That, does that mean that, you know, it's just going to be you're going to lay down on flowery beds of ease and, you know, you're just going to have a hunky-dory time? No, don't mean that. You know, when, when, when uh, the Lord took the children of Israel out of Egypt and took them to the promised land, they still had to face giants. They still had a problem. They still had to fight. They had to fight like Tom and Jerry to get the promised land. They had to do some work to get it done. But you know what? God had already given them the victory, but they still had to walk it out. Amen? They still had to stand firm. They still had to trust God, and that's what you're going to have to do. That's what I'm going to have to do every day. It's not a situation or a scenario where you can just take a break from walking by faith. It's every day, 24-7. Keep your armor on all the time. Your helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, your breastplate of righteousness, your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You must keep your armor on. And if you didn't know you was in a battle, you already lost. Amen? You was POW already. You was a casualty of woe. Amen? So keep your, keep your, keep your armor on. Amen? God wants to get the glory out of your life. He does great things in your life to show others and you how good he is. Amen? We must be careful about being overeducated. Education is good. Having your degree is good. You know, having you know, your doctorate is good. All those things are good. That helps to enhance what God has placed on the inside of you. Amen? It helps to enhance those things, but we must be careful about being overly educated. Because it can become a stumbling block for you. 
Because if you notice, the very highly educated in many times don't have any relationship with God because their their intelligence is their God. You know, they rely on what they have learned over the years to negotiate themselves through life. And that's what happens to a lot of our young people. They 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 go to college loving God and they and they get up under these ungodly, you know, professors and stuff like that and they just they just lecture God right out of their lives. Tell them there is no God. And, and then you paying for that. $20,000 a year. You paying to have them push God out of their lives. Don't do it. Don't do it to them. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Say amen, squirrels. Hallelujah. Praise God. God gives us intelligence to recognize him and who he is. That's, who you, that's how you show your intelligence. In re- recognizing that there is a risen Lord. That's sitting on, a, sitting, sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. Making intercession for you daily. That's how you show how, how intelligent you are. Jesus is Lord. Man, that, that guy is brilliant. That guy is brilliant right there. He know that there is a God. And he know which one is the right one. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The more you acknowledge and esteem the Lord. The more you acknowledge and esteem the Lord. The more he blesses and increases you. Why? For his glory. Many people are so puffed up with head knowledge that they can't be led by the spirit. Don't let that be you. We are spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a body. Some people spend their whole lives just puffing their mind up with information and knowledge. And they're not, their, their life is defunct. God uses hardships, calamities, disappointments, Repossessed cars, foreclosures, divorces, deaths, deaths of loved ones, loss of job. All of these things happen. But they are to refine you. They are to point you back to him. To remind you that if I was so great, I would acknowledge the one who is the greatest. Amen. I have lost. I've lost a house. I've been falsely accused. I've had a car repossessed. I've been fired from two jobs. First wife died of cancer. But God. But God. He said, well, you a a minister of the gospel. You went to to Rhema. You know, you preaching faith. Your wife died of cancer? Yeah. I didn't say I died. (laughs) What's that got to do with me? Well, you, you're the faith guy. You, couldn't you just pray and get them healed? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Because it's not my job. I'm not the healer. Never said I was. See, so that's where people get locked, locked up, locked down, bogged down in. You know, they, you know, they, you know, whether they know it or not, they're trying to bring condemnation. You make you feel like, well, you know, you're not in faith like you think you are. You know, oh, wait, 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 wait. I ain't never said I was the healer. If you want to go on and be with the Lord, that's your, that's your option. You know, the die's gain. The Bible says, as from the body, present with the Lord. Amen. So what I, need to, what I need to be all upset about, you know, God's still blessing me. The word's still working for me. That's a, the word works for whoever works it. Amen. 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 Yeah. Newsflash, the word works for whoever works it. Well, what not they believe in God and they still die? Well, you know what? I just covered the scripture. It said the secret thing belongs to the Lord. And People can tell you all day and all night, oh, I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. You know, oh, you know, the Lord is good. He's a healer. And that's true. But see, you don't know what they're saying when you ain't there. You don't know what they've been living prior to your showing up. And you don't know what they're saying after you leave. You're praying that powerful prayer you just got through praying. You know. As soon as you leave the room, oh, Lord, I'm just, oh, I'm just so sick. And, Lord, I just don't know what's going to I don't know how I'm going to make it, Lord. You know, and, see, they, they talking something totally different that you don't have any privilege to. But then when they leave, when they die, when they go on, 
you know, that leaves you in a state where, you know, well, Lord, what happened? You know, so I don't, I don't get myself all in. You know, when people call me to the hospital and say, will you pray for my cousin, pray for my uncle, this, that, and the other, I'm going to go and pray. But the first thing I want to do is I want to find out what, what this individual is thinking about, what they're praying about, what they're praying. What do you believe in God for? You know, sometimes they tell you the truth, sometimes they don't. You know? You know, because they got all the folks in the room or, you know, they just want to put on a good facade for you. Well, the preacher's here. Let me tell them I want to live, you know, and let them feel good about praying for me, you know. All kind of things go through, you know, people's minds and hearts and stuff. But, you know, what's my responsibility? Well, I'm going to still pray. I'm going to still believe God. I'm going to still help you to get whatever it is you say you believe in God for. But at the end of the day, the responsibility is on you. I'm, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. But at the end of the day, you got to believe God for yourself. Amen. So if God wants to, if, if, if you want the Lord to do something, that ought to be between you and him first. Amen. Amen? And not on your pastor, not on the preacher. Amen. That's a little rabbit trail I went down. I, got down. I guess I'll come back now. Praise God. But it's still good. Amen. I'm still here and God is still good. I think that's where I left off at. And he's still blessing me. Hallelujah. And he wants to bless you. You know what? When tests and trials come, it's a refining process for you. That's the way you ought to see that as a refining process. What happens in a refinery? They put heat to it. If they want to get something out of something, they put heat to it. You know, when, the, when, they, when they put out this, this, uh, this health warning, you know, City High Point, they said, you know, don't drink the water. We, it may be contaminated. We recommend that you boil your water before you drink it. Put some fire to it. You want to you, you get the heebie-jeebies out of it. You better put some, put some heat on it. You know, you don't want to be drinking the cooties down. That little three-headed amoeba or whatever. And then it was just, you know, wasn't nothing in it. It was just somebody, you know, put something on, you know, they speak it out in the water, you know. They said, oh, well, it's not in the water. Oh. You know, you know how, much, how much business that affected? Having to shut that stuff down? We went to, we tried to go to the restaurant. We can't give you any water out the thing because, you know, they got this, you know, people were just getting up from the restaurant, leaving. You know, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. We, don't, we don't want the EBGBs, you know. So, but you know, the refining process requires fire, heat, to get it pure. Amen? And that's what your tests and trials are coming to do to you and for you. Don't look at it as something being done to you. Look at it as being something done for you. Because it's refining you. It's getting out those things that are, that are going to be contaminants to your faith. It shows up some weaknesses that you may have. So now you've got to go, come back to the one who is the strengthener. Lord, I'm having a problem here. See, all this stuff is to just turn you back to the Lord and get you redirected and focused on him. Amen? Amen. And so you need to realize what that's all about. <clears throat> Do you want to be a, a vessel you, fit for the, for the master's use? You're going to have to endure those times of refining that come to us all. Everybody's going to be tested. Everybody's going to be tried. Everybody's going to have to go through something in order to meet the requirements. Because, see, you know, in the school system now, you know, case in point, you know, these kids, you know, can be passed from grade to grade to grade, you know, and they haven't met the qualifications. God is not like that. If you don't pass the second grade in God, you don't go to the third. With your big tail, you're going to be in the third, you're going to be in the second grade. <laughs> For four years if you need to be. <laughs> Second grade. That's where you at. Come on, stop playing. Give us the ball. Oh, I, ain't letting, I ain't letting y'all play with it. You're a big second grade tail, baby. You know you're supposed to be in the seventh grade. You down here with these sec, sec, second graders. You're a big tail. Of course you're dominating on the basketball court. You ain't supposed to be in the seventh grade. You're dunking on them. The second graders. Man, I'm, I run this house. <laughs> you ain't running nothing with your big dumb self. <laughs> Get up there with the seventh graders, then you have a, where you're supposed to be. But God doesn't do that. 
you're going to have to go through and go through and go through until you can turn your face to him and say, Lord, help me. And then he show you. And then you do that. And then you can go on to the next. Amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Amen. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3 and 12. And then 14th verse. All right. Praise God. Are you getting anything? It says, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? Persecution. <laughs> you didn't say I was going to have to suffer, did you? And we don't like that, boy. You know, man, if you ain't patting me on the back and giving me cream, cream cheese, cheesecake, and, you know, telling me how wonderful I am, you know, I ain't feeling that too much. You know? That's how we are in the society that we live in now. Everybody's want like want to want to be a pat, have a pat on the back, and you know not have to endure anything, not have to have no patience. You know, you go to McDonald's, they take longer than three minutes to get your you know your cheeseburger out to you. You want to see the manager, you know? I mean, hey, hey, hey! I ordered this Big Mac three minutes ago. I need to see the manager. You know, my fries are not super scalding hot. They're just kind of mildly hot. You know, it's not burning my tongue and lips when I eat into it. It's, you know, it's, it's, that's not hot, you know. Okay, so now you don't have any feeling and sensation in your mouth because you want these scalding hot fries in it, you know, because they didn't get them out to you and, you know, now you want a free meal. You know, that's what it's all about. What's your motive there? Somebody say amen up in this Holy Ghost church. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I know ain't nobody in here doing that. You know, ain't nobody here. That's, 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 that's the church of the frozen chosen down the street that's doing that. Nobody here is doing that. I ain't called no names. I ain't looked you right in your eyes and say, ooh, that's you. Uh, praise God forever. Hallelujah. Well, without a test, you do not have a testimony. No test, no testimony. No, no, no proof that God is doing what he say he can do if you're not willing to go through the test. Amen. James 1 and 2 says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. You need to have some patience. You don't need. Yeah, yeah they probably should have your burger out a little faster, but. It ain't going to hurt you to have to wait a little bit for it. You know, they had to, you did special order it with extra mayonnaise. <coughs> you know, it ain't just sitting in the bin waiting on you. Now, if somebody got to physically take the mayonnaise, <coughs> put it back together, wrap it up, and hand it to you. That's going to take a minute. So don't, don't, don't go off the deep end because it took an extra minute for me to get my extra mayonnaise on there. You could have just asked for a pack of mayonnaise and put it on there yourself. Duh. Mm. Holy Ghost preached to me. Hallelujah. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be want perfect and entire wanting nothing. You may be complete. Hallelujah. Be in faith during every and all aspects of any trial that you may find yourself in. In the front end, in the middle part, in the back end. Keep your armor on at all times. We covered this, but we're going to hit it again. Do not take your helmet off just because it got hot. You know, if you're fighting in a, you know, you're fighting in a battle, fighting in a war, you know, you got your, you know, your, you know, if we go back to Roman times, you know, they used to have this big steel bucket on their head, you know, to protect them. Well, because somebody, some Neanderthal was trying to take your head off. You know, and if you take your helmet off, you're subject to lose that head that you had that helmet. You won't even need a helmet no more because it's going to be somewhere else unattached from your body. So you do not want to remove your, your armor because you are in a battle. The enemy is trying to take your head off. Do not set your weapon down because it got heavy. What is your weapon? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do not Take a vacation from the word of God because it is your weapon in which you are able to do battle and run the devil off. Amen. Amen. You cannot resist the devil unless you got the word 
rooted down on the in inside of you. Can't do it. All you have at that point is head knowledge. And the, and the devil loves when you think you puffed up with head knowledge. Because he, he'll, just, he'll, just, he'll just wear your head out. He'll wear you out. Because the only thing he has to respond to is the word. Jesus didn't say, you know, according to my, uh, my uh, uh, association. Jesus didn't say, uh, according to my uh, degree in physics. Jesus did not say, according to my connection to the mob. He didn't say none of that. He said, it is written. You have to know what's written. You have to hide the word of God on the inside of you and store it and keep it ready for when the attack comes. Amen. Because the attack is coming. Test day is coming. Test day may not be every day on Tuesday. It may not be every day at 4 o'clock. It may not be every other week. But you're going to have a test. And the devil always does a pop quiz on you. He always do pop quiz. He don't schedule your tests. You know, so in, in school, you know, they say, well, you're going to have a test on Friday. Your vocabulary test is on Friday. Get ready. No, the devil don't do you like that. He don't say, I'm going to challenge your marriage on, on uh, next, next Friday. He don't tell you that. You just come through the door, and your spouse is looking crazy. Careful. You're like, uh, uh, honey? Uh, you all right? Um, um, um. You know, you, ain't no warnings going to go off. Ain't no lights going to be flashing on the, on, the, on the porch before you come in the house. Hmm, there's no light flashing. I think I'm about to be tested. No. Oh, devil just put that test on you out the blue. Somebody say amen. But you're going to have to be ready. You're going to have to have that word hid down on the inside of you. Amen? amen. You're going to have to be ready. Amen. You're going to have to be walking in love at all times. Don't just walk, on love, walk in love at the job. Let them folks see how, how you know, great a man or woman of God you are at the job. You know, your greatest test of your love walk is at the house. Amen. amen. When, you, when your spouse say, you know, honey, could you go downstairs and uh, get the clothes out the, out the, out the uh, dryer and bring it up here? I'm watching the game. I'm watching the game. Why well, I got to go get some clothes? Oh, oh, now, oh, now, you, you super strong in faith now, huh? Oh, you faith man can't go downstairs and get the clothes, uh, get the clothes out of the dryer now. Uh -huh. Yeah, you are now being tested, and you are getting a failing grade. <laughs> but don't worry, you will be tested again, because you're not going to the third grade yet with your big tail. You better start realizing that you can't pass the test unless you do what the word of God say. Amen? Amen. With your big tail. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So <clears throat> don't cast away your confidence. Hebrews 10 and 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Yet for a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You fail without walking by faith. Fail with your big tail. But we are not of them who, who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Sometimes we create our own problems thinking that we are following God. Look at Abraham with Ishmael. You know, some people, you know, have made some Ishmaels in their life. You know, you thought you was following God. You know, oh, I'm going to do this, that, and other. And, you know, just, just this scenario, if you don't know anything about the story of Abraham and, uh, and Hagar and Sarah. You know, the Lord had done promised over in Genesis, you know, Abraham, you're going to be you're going to be a great nation uh, through your seed. You're going to be mighty. You know, you're going to you're going to be wealthy. You're going to be prosperous. You know, I'm going to do all these things through your seed, you know. But, you know, Abraham's not, you know, he talks to uh, Abraham at 75, 20 years later, you know, baby, 
you know, Abraham getting a bright idea. Abraham, uh, Sarah getting a bright idea. You know, Sarah like, well, you know, God might have forgot about us. You know, I ain't, you know, you, you, you still eating off the Viagra tree over there and it's still not happening. You know, the Cialis root over there is not working. Da, 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 da. Uh, we going to have to do something else. I tell you what, Abraham, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you a bone. Uh, my little young uh, servant girl over there, she's still, uh, it's, it's still fertile. Why don't you make a baby with her? And of course, like most men, he was like, uh, you know, I don't think I should do that, Sarah. She's young and fine, and, you know, I just don't think that that would be a good idea. Nah, nah, that is not what Abraham said. I don't think, I don't think Sarah got that out of his mouth, out of her mouth good before he was over there. You know, Abraham, I think y'all take hey, Gone. You know. Well, do you know when you operate in the flesh like that, you're going to make an Ishmael. Mm. So now, so now, you got God's word on this side, and then you got Ishmael over here. Well, what you going to do? Hmm. Well, you're going to have to repent. You're going to have to get before God, Lord, I messed up. Now, you know, there's, 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 a, there's so much more that I, I, I have to cover concerning this because we want to talk, talk a little bit about David and his mess up with, with Bathsheba and, and the correlation between these two stories, Abraham, and Sarah, and Hagar versus David and Bathsheba because there is a, a stark difference between the two. They both had their Ishmael moment, but God was able to do something through David's life that he was not able to do through Abraham and Sarah at the time. God's purpose and plan was still fulfilled. It still was fulfilled just a different way because of the covenant that God had made. Amen? But maybe we'll get a chance to cover that next time. It's, it's called a cliffhang cliffhanger. <laughs> Tune in next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Same Gee, Batman, what are we going to do? Don't worry, boy wonder. We're going to make it. <laughs> How will Batman make it? Tune in next week. Well, it won't be next week because Pastor's going to be back next week. <laughs> Amen. So you're just going to have to keep coming back. Amen. Amen. And maybe we'll finish this some other time. Amen. But before we get out of here, you know, some of you may have had a... Uh, be experiencing a time right now that you're you're needing God to to do a reboot on your life do a reboot on the direction that you're going in and God's all about doing reboots praise God thank God for that because you know we've all messed up we've all fallen short we've all done things that don't glorify the Lord the way we should but you know what if, he, if, we're, if we come to him in faith and confess that, you know, Lord, I missed it. I made a mistake. He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And I'll set this, set this out there before you today. That if there is one that's saying, well, you know, I, I need a reboot. I need a reset. I need to get back to where I need to be. I want to put this out there to you. We want to pray for you. God's a, God, God's a forgiving God. He loves all of us equally. Amen. You confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are in the family of God. But more importantly than that, if you have not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we need to get that right first. Because you can't even enter into what I'm talking about without receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So if there's one in the house today that has not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you need to come down here. We need to get you born again. We need to get you in your heart right with God. Amen. Would there be one? Would there be one? Just raise your hand and we're gonna, we want to pray with you. And secondly, secondly, as I stated before, those of you who need a reboot, want to rededicate your life back to the, to the things of God, to the purpose of God for your life. 
you know, it's not too late. You can come on, come on, come on. You can start right where you are. Boom. And go move forward in the things of God. You know, Moses had Moses waited 40 years before he started walking in the plan and purpose of God. But, you know, don't let that be 40 years for you. It don't have to be 40 years for you. You can change your direction today and be moved in the right direction. Start walking in the plan and the purpose that God has for you today. Would there be one? Would there be one? Amen. And thirdly, my final invitation. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You know, the, the, the book of Acts says in, in uh, Acts 2 and 4, and they were all filled with the, with the Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, this is, this is a New Testament church thing op- that's operating today. It's full effective right now. And you don't really tap into the things of God in its fullest measure without that baptism. I've been on both sides of this coin. You know, I, I was raised up in the Presbyterian church, went to church every Sunday. No power. Didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. Didn't know anything about the Spirit of God. My, my Christian walk was passe, to say, it, to say it lightly. I still had my Michelob sitting in the refrigerator when I come home from church. Pop it up. <laughs> yeah, Michelob dry. That was a good service. But you know, once I got full of the Holy Ghost, I ain't need, I ain't need, I ain't need that Michelob no more. I didn't, didn't need it because now I got something better. And see, a lot of people don't realize that there's something better available, something better than drugs, something better than alcohol, something better than fornicating and having sex. There's something better called the Holy Ghost. Once you get full of the Holy Ghost, man, there's a, there's a cavity in your spirit, man, that's waiting on that Holy Ghost to get in it. Because, see, you're trying, to, you're trying to do all these other things to try to fill yourself, you know, to complete yourself. And it's, that's a reserve. It's, it's got a reserve sign all across it. Holy Spirit only. You keep trying to put drugs in. You keep trying to put alcohol in. You keep trying to put, you know, partying in it or whatever. You keep trying to, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to force this in there. No, nope, won't go. It's reserved for the Holy Spirit. And if you need the Holy Ghost, you know you ain't got the Holy Ghost. You know you ain't never spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. You need to come on down here. God's going to feel you. Amen. It's, a, it's, it's, it's reserved just for you. He, Jesus died so you could have this experience with having the Holy Spirit. Would there be one? And we're not going to hold you all day waiting to see, well, counting sheep. One, one, two, three, four, five. No, we're not going no, to do all that. But the invitation is, is out there. And you can do something with it if you want to. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.